If you want a representation of what comprises a trail bike in 2022, you just need to look at the forks on our top three bikes this year. RockShox's Sid, Pike and Lyric all feature. Forks with their roots spreading from XC to Enduro, with a classic trail fork popped in the middle. But which bikes have made our trail bike of the year podium? Stick around to find out which bike takes the win. We'll start our top three with the piked bike. While the fork might be a traditional trail product, the Canyon Spectral 125 it's bolted to is anything but. 125mm of travel is just below average for a trail bike, but what it lacks in suspension it more than makes up for in attitude. The bike has buckets of mid-stroke support to give you plenty of oomph to push off approaching a jump slip, or to prevent the bike collapsing under your weight in a berm. As such, the Spectral is a hooligan, encouraging you to hit jumps at full throttle, square off corners and stove the front end into catch burns before spitting you out at warp speed. Show it some chicanes through the dirt and the snappy back end and stout front triangle just beg to be muscled from side to side. Its shape is equally up to date, with a long reach, slack head angle and a short but steep seat tube too. This means the bike excels in the steeps. Drop the front wheel into a steep and loose chute and the Spectral is more than happy holding its line, before the composed rear end deftly deals with the catch, ensuring you're not dragging your heels as you point for the exit. It's not infallible though. Flat, twisty tracks need attacking to get the most out of the bike. So it's not one for cruisers looking for an easy ride who'll find it feels a little lazy. There's some pedal bob when you jab at the pedals, but speed on the flat can be generated if you put the effort in to pump it through rollers. It also doesn't deliver the smoothest ride around. The shorter travel for a bike with this attitude encourages you to hammer it into a rock garden, but this can leave you feeling a little battered as you exit. The exo casing tyres at both ends are also a false economy when it comes to ride quality. Yes, the Mini and DHR2 and Dissector treads do as they should, but the thin casing is puncture prone and pingy, especially considering what this bike can be capable of achieving. When it comes to climbing, the Spectral might not set any records, but it gets up the hill without complaining. The steep seat angle is comfortable, suspension seems relatively stable and efficient, so long as you're pedalling smoothly. The wide range 10 to 52 tooth cassette gives a very easy bottom gear. I also like the G5 dropper post. It's light in action and you can adjust the drop on offer on the trail by loosening the collar and rotating an inner step shim. Though only endowed with 5mm more travel and displaying many similar traits on paper, the Nuke Proof Reactor is an entirely different beast. While Canyon opt for a sleek full carbon frame, Nuke Proof employ aluminium in this version of their 130mm travel trail bike, though carbon seat stays make a brief appearance. Unlike the Canyon, the Reactor disguises modest travel numbers with a plush back end and, cliche alert, almost bottomless feel to its rear suspension, until you really slam it into a harsh landing of course. This leads to the bike being absolutely planted to the floor over choppy terrain, helping the tyres grapple with every ounce of grip available. This is all helped by the 150mm travel Lyric Select Plus up front. Its bulked up chassis and smooth feeling internals give it an authoritative feel, encouraging you to aim the 2.5 inch wide Maxxis Asagai at the furthest point you can see and just let go of the brakes. With front and rear suspension smoothing the way, it's up to the brakes to keep you in ultimate control. The Guide RE might be long in the tooth, but the combination of a guide lever and previous generation code caliper just seem to keep on giving, with buckets of power regardless of the situation. They might be a cheaper option, but we're all for it if this is Nuke Proof's way of saving a few pennies. All this smoothness comes at a cost though. Despite Nuke Proof claiming that the kinematics have been improved to aid pedaling stability in lower gears, its high overall weight and supple suspension does contribute to the reactor being the least reactive to pedal inputs in our test. Long days in the saddle feel that little bit longer, and unless you push and pull the bike aggressively through rolling terrain, it feels sluggish. The platform is there to generate speed off the back of a rise, but you have to push deep into the travel to find it. Despite this, the reactor was often picked for my weekend downtime rides, as it suits the winch and plummet type riding I love to do. However, when really hammering it on a long day, I often wondered why I pick a 130mm travel reactor when the Mega is so good. 
The extra margin for error on the 160mm bike is rarely going to be a bad thing down a hill and the cost on the climbs is fairly inconsequential. It's one of the main reasons the reactor just misses out on the top step of our test. So what bike has taken this year's Trail Bike of the Year top spot? If you've not already guessed, it's the Trek Top Fuel. I knew the Top Fuel was going to be a good bike from the minute I slung a leg over the 120mm travel Alloy Trail Bike's low slung top tube. Its geometry felt right from the off, the spec list is up to the task and the suspension is well regarded. It's easy to look at the bike from afar and assume this is just another downcountry rig with its SID fork and short travel figures. It wasn't until I'd fired it over some jumps, nosed it down the odd steep chute and slung it through my test loop sperms that I realised that the Top Fuel is a bloody brilliant trail bike. Trek's ABP suspension, which sits between a 4 bar and a 4 bar linkage with the rear pivot concentric to the rear axle, is proven. Likewise, RockShox's Deluxe Ultimate is one of the best single can air shocks around. Bontrager's XR4 tyres roll fast but still grip doggedly and Shimano's SLX and XT drivetrain components take some beating. Geometry numbers like the 66 degree head angle, 480mm reach and 36mm BB dropper all stand out too. They're all numbers in the ballpark of ones I'd spec if I had access to a trail bike's blueprint. Historically, the SID has been a pared down XC race fork. The latest SID though is one of the new generation of Burley XC downcountry light trail forks that feature lighter weight chassis packing in extra stiffness thanks to 35mm or 34mm in the case of a Fox 34 stanchions. It maxes out with 120mm of travel, the same as the rear end, and this model gets the base level fork that uses the OEM only Rush RL damper. For anyone unsure of how the SID compares, I think it feels slightly stiffer than a Fox 34 at 120mm, but perhaps not quite as stout as a Pike. The damper might be bottom end, but it's still smooth and remarkably well controlled, with plenty of progression and little in the way of spiking. The result is that the front and rear match each other very well, and the bike performs far better than one might expect on a wide range of tracks and trails, making it the most popular bike amongst our diverse group of trail bike of the year testers. The four piston Shimano brakes offer predictable yet punchy power. So whether you're grabbing a fistful of stopping power when you're hauling down the trail or deftly trying to shimmy down a tight, steep, slow speed tech fest, you're in ultimate control. Over trail centre features, the bike has an addictive personality. It has pop for days, encouraging you to hop, skip and jump your way all over the trail, leaving the ground at every opportunity. Spy a rocky or rooty takeoff, and the top fuel wants you to bounce a front tyre off the top and pull the bike skywards before the low BB and long front end scream to be slung through the following berm as fast as you dare. Take it to the trees and the wide Bontrager branded bars, short stem, and tight 435mm chainstays work together to ensure direction change is a jet boat like rather than oil tanker in speed, while the bike's reaction times to pedal inputs put Usain Bolts to shame. It's not all about the descents though, and with XC DNA running through its alloy chassis, the top fuel certainly doesn't shy away from the climbs. The seated position is great, as is the rear suspension's ability to filter out pedal inputs from compressing the shock. It's not quite as light as you might imagine though, at 14.8 kilos. This perhaps distinguishes it from the best downcountry bikes out there, which often come in a kilo or two lighter. And the bike does have its limitations. Hammer it as hard as you can into jumbled rocks or amassed roots and the fork can twang around a bit. Likewise though, the 120mm back end is also going to struggle when you really batter it through the chunder, despite the shock's progression later in its stroke. Ok, so if you spend your weekend searching out the gnarliest lines, then the top fuel might not be for you. But there are plenty of other bikes in this test that will float your boat. For the majority of everyday trail riders, the top fuel has every trick in the book ready to pull out at a moment's notice. Whether you're rallying through trail centres, carving turns in the woods, or developing your skills on steep and more technical terrain. Picking a 120mm travel trail bike as trail bike of the year took a bit of soul searching, I have to admit. The diversity of bikes available aimed at the trail rider is as broad as the trails on which they're ridden. Specialised stump jumper in this test is perhaps the most all-round bike, but it failed to really light a spark under me. Subscribe to the channel for my full review on that bike soon though. 
Previous winners such as the Bird Ether 9 and Propane Huji are still hugely accomplished too. You can find my video reviews for those bikes in the video description. The Canyon Spectral 125 was the bike that got me into trouble the most and the Raptor was the bike that most likely got me out of it. But the top fuel stole hearts if not heads in 2022. A trail bike needs to do it all, climb well, descend with authority and ask to come back for more and more. The top fuel got me to the top of the hill without making me yearn for my XC rigs. It made me grin like a Cheshire cat on fast flow trails and rarely balked when gradients steepened. If you want a bike to do it all, trust that it's quality, not quantity of suspension that does the bulk of the work and give a shorter travel, more agile bike a shot. You probably won't regret it. So those are my thoughts, what are yours? Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, give this video a thumbs up and keep an eye out for the rest of our bike of the year content across the channel.